the Archdiocese of Toronto, and the National Catholic Broadcasting Council. Through the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, presents Sunday TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Sunday TV Mass on the third Sunday of Lent. I'm Monsignor Robert Nuska. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from an anonymous donor from Scarborough, Ontario. This Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of her son, Joel Rosales. May his soul and the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace. Amen. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of the televising of this Mass to the faithful of Canada and around the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, to celebrate worthily now the mystery of our faith, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and for strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously upon this confession of our lowliness that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. They then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and you will raise it up in three days. But Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. When he was in Jerusalem during the Passover festival, many believed in his name because they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus, on his part, would not entrust himself to them because he knew all people and needed no one to testify about human nature for he himself knew what was within the human person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. During these Sundays of Lent, the Gospels have been presenting a number of key biblical images for our reflection. Two Sundays ago, Mark's account of the temptation of our Lord led us to reflect a bit on the image of the desert, an enduring spiritual symbol of retreat from the world, of solitude, of asceticism, and of the encounter with the glory of God. Indeed, as the Catechism of the Church reminds us, Lent is a time for us to unite ourselves spiritually to the mystery of Jesus in the desert, leaving behind those things that distract us from a deeper relationship with God. Last Sunday, Mark's account of the transfiguration of our Lord reminded us, and here in the words of St. Gregory Nazianzus, that God took on human form and became poor for our sake in order to recover the divine image within us and so to create humanity anew, thus restoring what was lost through the sin of Adam. Our Lord's transformation on the Mount of Transfiguration then prefigures our own transformation in the world to come. Today's gospel now leads us to reflect on the image of the temple, which was for the Jewish people the holiest of all places. In the words of one scholar, the temple speaks to us of a world in which God's glory reigns supreme, a world in which God's justice is praised, 
a world in which life is peaceful and serene. For the prophets, for the apocalyptic seers, the temple, the temple is, in the words of one scholar, a piece of primal perfection available within the broken world of everyday experience, nothing less than heaven on earth. In this context, certainly John's account of the cleansing of the temple presents some startling, indeed troubling images of an angry Jesus who becomes enraged at some of the practices surrounding temple worship. Certainly the image of an angry Jesus contrasts sharply with what we find in the context immediately preceding today's gospel where he has turned the water into wine at the wedding feast of Cana. But in John's gospel, we see in today's gospel that it's Christ himself now who's come to replace the temple. Commentators observe that Jesus becomes the new locus, the very center, the focal point of God's presence on earth. For it is Christ who incarnates the manifest, the manifest God's glory. He dwells within us in grace and truth. And it is in the person of, in the body of Christ itself, that the Old Testament prophetic dreams of a dwelling place of God among us, uh, they come now to be fully realized. It is in Jesus that God the Father wants to dwell also within us through the power of the Holy Spirit, notwithstanding our own sinfulness and imperfection. The lines of theological and spiritual reflection that we find in John's Gospel are developed rather more clearly, indeed more fully, toward the end of the book of Revelation, in John's elaborate description of the arrival of the New Jerusalem. There he sees no temple, for the Lord God and the Lamb are the new city's temple. Indeed, he writes, the city does not need the sun or moon to shine upon it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb of God is its lamp. So yes, Jesus is in the temple, he is the point of encounter between humanity and the infinite holiness of God, but we too have been called in Christ to become temples of the Holy Spirit. Here, St. Paul develops these lines of reflection and invites us to appropriate this symbolism for ourselves, to raise our sights upward, but also inward, calling us to grow, to move forward on the journey of the spiritual life, reminding us that we too have, become, have been called to become temples of the Holy Spirit. Here in his first letter to the Corinthians, Paul asks, do you not know that you are God's temple, that God's spirit dwells in you? We've been created to be God's living temples then. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, God has come to dwell within our hearts. So another spiritual author here, now writing in the sixth century, invites us to live accordingly. So consider yourself, he writes, consider yourself the temple of God. For Jesus came into the world to cast out the powers of darkness and to reclaim us as his own house and temple. He adds that we are not yet glorified with Christ because we haven't yet suffered with him. We're not yet living out the mystery of the cross, and so we haven't yet made ourselves the temple of God and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. He warns that our hearts are still temples of idols, and as a result, the morning star has not yet risen in our hearts. In his letter to the Philippians, Paul uses athletic imagery as he reminds us of the importance of striving toward the prize, pressing on toward the goal of the prize of the heavenly call in Jesus Christ. And so during the season of Lent, it's a time for us to renew our efforts to grow and to make progress in the spiritual life. A time for us to be on our guard lest we desecrate this temple of God and make of our hearts, bodies, and souls something other than what God wants us to be through our sinfulness, through our attachment to things that keep us separated from God. So may this Lent then be a time for us to cleanse the temples of our hearts, to rid ourselves of pride, of selfishness, of insensitive attitudes or behaviors that prevent us from seeing and responding to the sufferings of others. May we make every effort to drive out whatever has no place in the temple of our body, of our mind, of our spirit, through the new renewed life of prayer, through fasting, through penance, through almsgiving, by going to confession regularly to receive the grace of God's loving mercy. And as we continue to celebrate this Mass, let us pray for the grace to welcome Jesus into the temple of our hearts through our attentive celebration of the holy sacrifice of the Mass. And may we live always as God's temple that his glorious light may shine through us into a darkened world. Finally, St. Leo the Great offers us an inspiring, uh, inspiring idea when he teaches us that if we are indeed a temple of God, and if the Spirit of God dwells within our hearts, then what every believer has within their soul is greater than what they admire in the sky.
Brothers and sisters, let us now profess our faith together now in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. And is in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us now make our prayers and petitions to God in heaven, ask him to hear and to answer the prayers of all that we make now in Jesus' name. For peace in the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in our daily TV Mass prayer intentions book, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. During this month dedicated to the Holy Family, we ask in our community prayer that all those in our families who are suffering in mind, body, or spirit may find relief and healing through the Heavenly Father, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you know the needs of your, passing, your people in this passing life. We ask you to hear the prayers we made and those that remain deep within our hearts, for we make them all through Christ our Lord. Insistence of my sacrifice may be acceptable to God the, uh, God the Almighty Father. Amen. 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 Your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of the Lord. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children this sacred time for the renewing and the purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that endure, eternally endure. Now with the angels, the archangels, with all the saints, we praise you as without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. Do never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. 
For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving, in giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Francis, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've gathered here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. But by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us extend to those around us a sign of the peace of Christ.
take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. By the blood of Jesus Christ, bring us all to everlasting life. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful and in your kindness. Grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and of their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. We gather.